What's up guys? So today we're going to learn a little bit about the real-time API, what it is exactly, and how it compares to established voice AI platforms like Vapi. So essentially the real-time API is in its beta and it lets developers create low latency voice-based apps similar to ChatGPT's advanced voice mode. So essentially what it is is you are able to build voice applications um, with super low latency very quickly and pretty much create anything you want using this API. It does direct speech to speech conversations with six preset voices as of this recording and developers no longer need to use multiple models to handle speech, speech recognition and synthesis. The API allows continuous connection to streamline full conversations with one call, making it ideal for customer support and learning apps. So the API is affordable, but we'll get to that later. It's priced by text and audio tokens with future updates to add more features like visual and video support, higher usage limits, SDK integration, and new model options. So a lot of people have been wondering and worried are established voice AI platforms in danger? Platforms like Vapi, Air AI, Synthflow, Bland, okay? Is the real-time API going to put these out of business? Well, let's take a look. Unlike the other voice AI platforms, the real-time API has the ability to do direct speech-to-speech -speech capabilities. So this means that the real-time API eliminates the need for converting speech to text and back. This reduces latency and streamlines communication, potentially making current platforms more complex processes seem outdated. Okay, so this leads to faster response times. And users might believe it will outperform existing platforms that struggle with delays due to multiple processing steps. You know, these multiple processing steps, sometimes they are noticeable um, when having to convert a uh, customer's uh, speech into text and then translate it um, and then read it in context and then spit something back out uh, that is coherent. Uh, the real-time API also has em improved emotional empathetic responses so it can interpret and respond to vocal tones and emotions addressing a key limitation in current uh, voice AI systems which would lead people to think that it would develop a superior more human-like experience, right? Simplified integration. Uh, the API's potential to reduce the need for multiple providers and integrations might make people believe it will replace platforms that rely on more complex tech stack. So, um, of course, Vapi it uses a lot of different applications and other technologies to make its platform work. Um, with Open a Open Open AI Real Time API. It's all under one uh, umbrella, and it makes it much less uh, um, prone to things breaking, right? And of course, OpenAI's dominance. You know, OpenAI is the dominant player in the space right now. Um, their word is gospel to a lot of people, especially people who aren't really, doesn't really know a ton about voice AI in general, and they hear the re real-time API, and they automatically want to jump on board, okay? So this will create a lot of fear that, you know, these other platforms will be quickly becomes obsolete the more uh, features and APIs that OpenAI releases. So before we dig into the comparison, some real world use cases happening right now with the real time API. Obviously, customer service applications, you can build these and really fine tune them to be uh, highly functional and highly efficient. Um, and really get some good use out of um, front-facing customer service applications, right? Language learning platforms like Speak, obviously this is a, a, a very obvious use case, but um, the API is very quick and very quick to translate things as well. And it um, people are going to be able to build some seriously cool language learning platforms uh, with this API. And of course, the uh, example they have when they release their, their article regarding the API, platforms like Healthify, you know, 
This is going to open up a lot of uh, possibilities for personalized coaching um, with health and fitness. You know, people are going to be able to call in whenever um, to get their personalized diet plans, workout plans from their trainers, right? Even when their trainer is not available to talk, this API is really powerful and it will be able to, to give them all that 24-7. So let's look at VAPI versus the real-time API. So this is what the VAPI process looks like right now. Okay, someone calls in and VAPI is orchestrating the whole thing, right? The input comes in, it uses something like Whisper or DeepGram to translate the text, the speech to text. And then this goes to the LLM to sort of put everything to context. It's like the brain, right? And it reads what the, the text is and then it puts something back out and then this text that it outputs has to be turned into speech again and then this output from the LLM which is now speech goes back to VAPI and then the VAPI will spit it out back to the caller right and this all happens very quickly but it can happen quicker how it happens with the real-time API is it's all under one open AI layer the audio input comes in OpenAI's LLMs uh, do the work, all the heavy lifting, and then it spits direct audio back out, and that goes to the caller, right? And you can build a um, custom voice application that can would be the front end facing of this, and it would uh, interact with all this. And so this would be like your your speak, you know, the language learning platform. This would be your Healthify, right? So. It's very extremely customizable as opposed to something like Vappy, which is more out of the box, ready to um, quickly build voice assistance. So real quick, let's break down the cost. The real-time API costs are advertised at about six cents a minute for the input and 24 cents a minute for the output. So this comes out at 30 cents a minute total. Um, from what I've seen and heard from other people who are building working applications with the real-time API, a lot of times it will come out to more than 30 cents a minute. I've seen upwards of 37 cents a minute. Whereas VAPI, right now it comes out to around 10 cents to 12 cents a minute on average. So a little bit cheaper, right? Almost a fourth of the cost when you're using VAPI. So the thing we have to realize now is the real-time API is still only in beta, and if you're not um, a developer, right, that knows how to program and create applications, you're gonna have a hard time using the real-time API, right? Um, whereas with Vappy, you can create an account and set up a voice assistant with basic functions uh, in an hour, right? Two hours. Um, it's very intuitive. You don't need to know how to code. That's really the main separator between the real-time API and VAPI's um, platform. Because with VAPI, you know, to build, obviously we've gone through how it goes speech to text and back to speech. But it also comes with all this other functionality, right? You can clone your voices with 11 labs, custom tailored to your business, real-time API, you can't do this right now. Custom automated automation integrations, right? Zapier, Make. Um, you can really get a lot of things going with those post-call automations in Make. Telephony apps um, like Twilio. This allows for a ton of different um, custom, you know, inbound and outbound voice automations. As a, you know, with things like lead management, uh, cold outreach, customer service, all these things. You get voice analytics, and it's low to no code. So you don't need no, to know how to code to use Vappy. All these things, if you wanted to use with the real-time API, as of right now, you would need to have a team probably that knows how to code this stuff, especially if you're a business. You're going to need to have your own in-house uh, development team, and that's just where we are right now. So what's probably going to happen soon is us as the users that uh, are building, want to build these solutions, want to implement these solutions into our business, but we're not uh, expert engineers, right? We don't know how to code these things ourselves. Soon, Vappy is going to uh, have the real-time API 
uh, built into their platform, okay? So this means you're going to have the flexibility in the best of both wor- both worlds. You're going to have the ability to choose what infrastructure you want to use specific to your business, right? Enterprise businesses are probably going to opt for something more, way more custom um, and complex with the real-time API. But small to mid-sized businesses are probably going to opt for the uh, basic orchestration layer provided by VAPI, right? Which allows for much more flexibility and um, ease of development, right? You can get these solutions out much quicker as opposed to uh, something with a real-time API. And then you're going to get, you know, both options will give you analytics, data review and summaries, integrations, simplified scalability, custom functions, streamlined setup, billing and maintenance, and more, right? So you get total flexibility in designing the right infrastructure tailored to your business needs. So now you have flexibility in infrastructure. VAPI takes care of maintenance, seamless integration with other platforms, which is huge. Zero code. VAPI, you can do some code with, but you don't really need to, to know how to code to start building automations, okay? Seamless assistant migration and automatic feature updates. You get all that with VAPI, and you get all these things, all this utility uh, when you combine that with the real-time API. So now I just want to give you guys a quick demo of the real-time API in action because it's honestly pretty cool about how, you know, with how fast it is. So you just want to go to playground.livekit.io and you can test this for yourself. So these settings over here, model is going to be GPT 4.0 real-time, Whisper 1 transcription. The voice, we're just going to go with Nova, and you, but you get uh, six voices here. And then response modalities, audio and text. So that's just how the output comes from the assistant. Temperature, which affects the randomness of the output. We'll go put that down back to seven. That's how I like to keep it. Max tokens, that just means how many, the the length of the response. Um, and then the threat, so term detection. This is just to when it, so when it knows to start speaking. So threshold, this is for the sound detection. Prefix padding, this just means uh, how much I talk before it realizes that it's my turn to speak. And then silence duration, this is how long it waits until it, it begins speaking after I have stopped. So I like to put this at 300 or else if you stop to think for a second, it will just start speaking over you. So let's give this voice assistant a uh, go here. It's just a simple prompt for a sushi restaurant that I uh, wrote in here and let's see what it does. Hello, welcome to Sakura Sushi. How can I assist you today? Are you looking for information about our menu, hours of operation, or perhaps customer reviews? Let me know how I can help. Yeah, can you tell me a bit about the menu? Can you tell me about the sushi rolls a little bit? Certainly. At Sakura Sushi, our sushi roll selection includes California roll, crab, avocado, and cucumber rolled in seaweed and rice, topped with sesame seeds. Mmm, that sounds good. Is that popular? Yes. Our sushi rolls are quite popular. The dragon roll with its combination of eel, cucumber, avocado, and fresh avocado slices on top is a customer favorite. The rainbow roll is also loved for its vibrant assortment of tuna, salmon, and shrimp sashimi on top of a California roll. Okay, can you tell me what you got for dessert? Certainly. At Sakura Sushi, our sushi roll selection includes California roll, crab, avocado, and cucumber rolled in seaweed and rice, topped with sesame seeds. Cucumber, avocado. Awesome, I think I've heard enough. What time do you guys open at? We are open Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. And 
on Saturday from 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. We're closed on Sundays. Feel free to drop by during those hours. I appreciate all your information. Thank you. Have a great day. You're welcome. If you have any more... So that was just a quick demonstration. Um, obviously, it's very quick to respond. The latency is very low, which is really nice. And um, for real world, real world applications, you could do a lot with this, right? You could have a, um, a, a restaurant answering bot. Um, you could have a customer service agent doing lots of things, responding very quickly. Um, but it is going to cost you... A little bit more around three to four times as much as Vappy and it is going to require some programming knowledge um, if you want to implement this into your business all right I really appreciate you guys watching today don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this content valuable and I hope you have a great day thank you